Hey, good morning, Story Church. Welcome. So good to have you joining us here on this wet Sunday morning outside here in North Carolina. Glad to have you here. I don't know how many of you watched the game last night, which here locally is a big deal. Duke and Carolina. Bad guys won. Carolina, congrats to all my Carolina friends. Don't say I never said that because I just did. But hey, today's a big day. I know some of you are excited to watch the Super Bowl. I don't know if I was allowed to just say that out loud. I think I owe someone money now, but glad that you're here. Welcome once again. And uh, it's going to be a great morning here at Story Church. Um, a lot to tell you about, some new things happening and uh, some exciting stuff. So let me just kind of navigate this morning through our announcements a little bit. I want to let you know, first of all, if you are kind of new-ish, we would love to get to know you a little bit. And you can go to our website, storychurch.org forward slash connect. And uh, there you'll find a button to click, to fill out a little bit of information, tell us who you are and uh, a little bit about yourself, and then we can connect with you throughout the week. We would love to be able to do that. And, and one of the main reasons is because we want to be able to invite you to an event we're actually doing next Sunday, right after the service, is our monthly Chapter 1 Zoom call. So if you are new to Story Church, you've never done this before, it's, we want to invite you right after the service next Sunday. We'll do our normal live stream, and then we'll jump on over uh, to Zoom, and we'll get to interact face-to-face -face in that way, and just kind of get to know you a little bit, and you can get to know Story Church, get to know some of our leaders. We love doing this. We would love it if you were there. So if you go to that Connect page, sign up, we will uh, send you an invite this week to Zoom. We would love to have you there next Sunday after the service. Also want to let you know we have a brand new semester of groups that is just kicking off. They are live on our website. If you haven't gone there yet, I want to encourage you to go sign up. There's some incredible opportunities for you to connect with other Story Churchers, mostly online, mostly through Zoom, but uh, there's one or two that actually meet outdoor, in person, and uh, so if you're needing some, you know, communication with others, you need to see some people, you want to be able to connect with people and share about your week or share about your life. Lots of opportunities going on there, including one, if I could just plug it, that Kimmy and I will be leading together, which is a group on parenting. And uh, while we are no experts, we have certainly had our fair share of kids in the house, and we're going to read a book together and go through that. So if you're interested Go check out that and many other opportunities on our groups page on the website. Finally, this morning, all that, those kinds of links I've mentioned and everything else you might be uh, needing to know are available in our weekly email that hits your email inbox every Friday. If you haven't signed up yet, make sure you've done that, and, uh, and then we'll get all that info out to you. Well, that is all I've got for announcements. Uh, this morning... We're going to sing some songs together, and I know the last week was such a special treat to have Kyle with us, and we're going to do that again very soon in person, but today we're going to be able to lean on some of our pre-recorded uh, worship songs together, and uh, one of my favorite songs that we sing is this next one that Lawrence has recorded for us called Reckless Love. It's such an incredible song. I hope you'll sing along with us as we worship together. Let's sing.
All right, welcome back. Good morning once again. Thank you, Lawrence. And to all of you who didn't know, Lawrence just had a birthday. I think it was, I think it was Friday because I think he shares a birthday with our little one, uh, same day. So if you haven't already, there on the chats, appreciate Lawrence. Give him a shout out. Happy birthday, buddy. We miss you. Thank you so much for how you serve Story Church so well. Um, well, this morning, um, you know, it's been a few weeks. We haven't got to hear from Kimmy lately. Uh, we've had a few other things happening on Sunday mornings, and and frankly, sometimes we have a few other things happening at home. And so um, I'm excited that Kimmy is back, and she is here to share with us a little bit this morning. Um, the passages I was reading this morning were perfect. The first one is Romans 8, 26 through 28 in the message. Um, it says, Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting... And I wrote, as we go into month 11 of the pandemic. Yeah. So, I um, already lost my spot. Meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside helping us along. Mm -hmm. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. It does, he, 
He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. He knows far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives, in our lives of love for God, is worked into something good. And I wrote, Lord, you know we are tired of waiting for this pandemic to be over. In the beginning, it was easier for me to find the redeeming treasures of this trial. I was so thankful for the chance to slow down and really see the gifts around me. I've become used to the gifts, and I am eager to open new gifts. Like a little kid, like, where's, I need another one. Lord, help me to stay focused on your good gifts right before me. Help me to enjoy today. I want to hope for the future, but I can only live in today. May I see your gifts today. May I rest in your love today. I'm eager to get back to normal, though much of my old normal was not healthy. I don't want to return to a chaotic family schedule. Help me to see what is best for an abundant life and ditch what distracts. And then I thought the second verse um, was also perfect um, from my Jesus Calling devotional, which was Psalms 42, 5. Um, it says, why am I discouraged? Why so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And I love how it says, I will, I will put my hope in God. And it says, I will put my hope in God. And put means to move, place in a particular position, set down, lay. And so I wrote, Lord, help me to move my hope in you, not my future circumstances. Help me place my trust in your abilities and not my own. In the second half of the verse, I love that it says, I will praise him again. Praise is key to making it through hard times. Even when you don't feel like praising, turn it on and turn it up. My mental um, chatter and worry often overcome me. And Jeremy can usually tell when I am starting to get anxious because I tend to get um, extra quiet. And he usually asks me, are you doing okay? I'm like, no, I'm stressing over this particular thing. It's because I get stuck in my head, uh, ruminating on all of the what ifs. When I'm in a funk, turning on my favorite Pandora Apple channel um, is the best. A favorite song I have on repeat right now is Stones by Kim Walker Smith. Um, I crank it up in my minivan as I pick up groceries and I have let the tears flow many a time with the song. The song says, find me in the valley, standing with my hands held high. The valley will never take my song. Find me in the desert, holding on to you for life. The desert will never take my song. I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry out. Um, I think that's in reference to a verse where it talks about um, all of God's creation, even the rocks cry out his praises. And so I think she's just saying that, like, I'm not going to let the rocks be the yeah, only I think ones it, I think praising. it actually is, like, if, if we don't praise, then the rocks will. Okay. Oh. And the, the idea mm -hmm. is, like, yeah, the, we don't need the rocks to do it because we'll do that's it. That's right. You know? That's right. Yeah. Um, and I just think about, like, um, that's why being out in nature is oftentimes so restorative because we're literally in an orchestra of praise all around mm -hmm. us. And so that's why I think it does something to our spirits because we are, we yeah, are in a company of praise. And this, the song goes on to say, I will praise you. Something in me has to. Find me, in, find me with the promise, dancing where you prophesied, still shouting of everything you've done. High upon the mountain, I was made to testify. Forever you will have my song. The longer the wait, the longer I'll praise. The stronger the pain, the stronger my faith grows. I will praise you. I will praise you. I won't let the stones cry out. Real quick, yep. one more time in case people are all of a sudden now excited about that. What was that song again? That song was Stones um, from the album Wild Heart um, by Kim Walker Smith. Kim Walker Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then in My Jesus Calling, which is a devotional, um, it's basically just her journal of um, – how she felt like God was speaking to her. So in my Jesus calling, it was perfect. Um, as I head out for a four-day retreat tomorrow morning, Jeremy surprised me with this trip. Um, he's seen how hard it has been for me lately as being a mama. Um, but it says in this devotional, come to me for rest and refreshment. The journey has been too much for you, and you are bone weary. Do not be ashamed of your exhaustion. Instead, see it as an opportunity for me to take charge of your life. Remember that I can fit everything into a pattern for good, including the things you wish were different. Start with where you are, accepting that this is where I intend for you to be. You will get, you will get through today one step, one moment at a time. Your main responsibility is to remain, oh my gosh, remains my word of the year. Sorry, I didn't realize that. 
<laughs> Your main responsibility is to remain attentive to me, letting letting me guide you through the many choices along your pathway. And so I want to close our time, um, just this little thing, with a prayer from Ephesians 1.8. It says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the wonderful future he has promised to those he's called. That's really good. I loved how you wrote earlier, it said, I, I want to hope for the future, but I have to live in today. And I, I know for me, that's that's the crux of the difficult part of this. You know, it's like, I want to, I want the future to be today, and, and yet it's not, you know, and, and so there's this tension I'm constantly feeling of, of uh, you know, I don't know if it's discontentment or, or what you call it, but this like desire for something better, which I don't think is a bad thing, but, but you know, having to sort of figure out, okay, how to make the most of today. Because, you know, we could think, oh, by spring or by summer, everything's going to be back to what we hope is normal. Yeah. But we don't, like, we honestly don't know. Yeah. And if it's longer, like, uh, the greatest place of peace is coming to a place of acceptance mm. and surrender. And so, like, God, whatever you have before me, whether it's, like, the summer or 10 more months, like, I can find joy in it. Yeah, that's really good. Well, um, so we've had this season of difficulty, and we're continuing on in it. And this next song that we're going to sing together really speaks to to that. It's called highs and lows. And, and we're going to sing about both the high points of, of a relationship with the Lord and, and when things are great. And, and then these low times when things aren't so great and we have to figure out how to keep going and keep moving. And, and it's a powerful song. And I want to encourage you to, to really crank it up and sing along with us this morning as we sing this song in worship.
All right, so great. Love the song. Love it so much. Um, we're going to spend a little time in prayer, and I, I apologize. I forgot to kind of prep you for this. Uh, I know our hosts jumped in and let you know that, but um, uh, any time that, that you have prayer needs, we want to be able to pray for you, not only here in this moment, but also throughout the week. And so uh, any time today, if you got anything that we can be praying about, let us know in the chat. Our hosts will grab those prayer requests and let us know, and then those will make it all the way to a team of people who pray for you throughout the week. And in fact, they'll meet tonight and pray for you in person together on Zoom. And so uh, please do let us know if we can pray for you. Uh, in the meantime, there's a lot going on in our world. There's a lot going on that we can just kind of assume that all of us are dealing with. And, and so uh, we're going to just spend some time praying this morning uh, before we get moving on with the rest of what we have planned. So let's pray together. Dear Lord, I just I thank you that we are here to um, that we are watching together, and I thank you that we have the freedom that we are not limited by our government and restricted in that way. And I pray for our brothers and sisters um, around the world who live in fear, um, meeting together um, and also meeting uh, virtually. Um, so I pray that you would give them strength and courage and boldness. I pray for I pray for the rest of us that we would remain. Um, walking in your love. And when things start to feel crazy or chaotic, I pray that we would just take a moment to rest in your love and to verbally say, I trust you, Jesus. Um, no matter mm -hmm. whatever that we're dealing with, I just, I trust you, Jesus. You got this. And um, we could trust you with our stories. We could trust you with our nation's story. We could trust you with our friends' stories. Yeah. Lord, help us just to trust um, with all the various stories that we might be fretting over. Help us not to expend... Um, too much of our energy on things that we cannot control. Help us to release that back to you and to accept and to surrender. Mm -hmm. um, just I pray for your peace. Um, I pray that your peace would be uh, just predominant in all of our lives. That we would that we would spend each day um, not not our spirits would not be chaotic, but that they would just be um, fully confident mm -hmm. and resting. In your, um, in your goodness and your love. Yeah. God, I pray for these requests that are coming in, Lord. I, I pray for um, uh, Alicia and her family, her husband, God, who, who had arm surgery. I just pray that, that he will uh, recover quickly, Lord, and uh, be able to get get over pain and, and any kind of hindrance that he has right now. I just pray that um, things will get back to to you better than before, and uh, that you'll you'll be in all of that, Lord. For I see multiple different kinds of requests for parents right now, God, and uh, I just I, I know that feeling. And so, Lord, for Mary, for for Paula, for um, uh, God, for us, uh, we just pray for wisdom. We pray for patience, God, as um, all of us have had to be. Um, uh, educators and activity coordinators and, and everything else during this season, Lord. I just pray that you will um, give us grace, give us understanding of each of our kids and what they need in this time. Help us to do that well. Um, God, for, um, for the moms specifically, I see this prayer request, Lord, just for them to um, be able to, to get the rest they need, get the recovery they need, Lord, and and God, many in many of our households, mom is the glue. Uh, she's doing so much. And so, um, God, I pray that you will uh, give mom just a special grace, give her, um, God, recovery, and give her opportunity for rest. Um, Lord, for, for those of us in a position to give that rest or to give relief, I pray you'll, you'll prompt us when that's necessary too. Um, God, also for Michael, for um, this family member, Lord, in hospice, I, I just pray for, for Michael, for this family member, God, for all those connected and involved, Lord, um, these are 
these are difficult times when we're watching someone um, that we love that is um, God in maybe in their final days. And we just pray that you will uh, bring peace, bring comfort. Um, God, bring uh, some special moments uh, together. And um, Lord, for students that are uh, struggling right now with, with the different um, choices they have during this time, Lord, uh, to be online, some now in person, God, and, and just these different options and, and different requirements and different ways that they have to uh, learn or um, grow in these ways. So God, we just pray for equal opportunity amongst our kids. We pray for those that are struggling to be able to um, to get the help that they need. And um, Lord, for all the things that, that they're missing, God, and that the rest of us are missing in this pandemic, I pray that you will restore those things uh, sevenfold on the other side of this, Lord that uh, memories, things that we're missing out on now, God, that we'll have an abundance of those in the days to come. And um, Lord, we just, we're so grateful that uh, that you're with us. Thank you, God, for for our health. For many of us who have stayed healthy throughout this, God, we, we don't want to take that for granted. God, for those who've gotten sick, who've recovered, Lord, we're so grateful. And uh, God, we remember those that we've lost. And we just pray for continued peace and healing in the hearts of each one of us. And uh, we thank you again for this opportunity. And we pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for, your, for trusting us to pray for you. And uh, again, if we can continue to pray for you, please do let us know. We're going to spend a couple of minutes just giving you an opportunity to say hello this morning in the chats. The conversation's already been lively in there. I appreciate that. Jump on in. Say hi. If you've never done the chat before, it's very simple. Just would love it if you would jump in there and say hi to somebody. Let us know you're watching today. And uh, we're so grateful that you're here. We'll be back in just about two or three minutes. All right, welcome back. Good to see so many of you in there on the chat. It's it's sort of our lobby right now. I love it. I love seeing many of you in there interacting. Uh, and the only difference is that we all get to be in on the conversation instead of people hanging out in corners of the lobby having their own conversations. And so it's really cool to see you. Thanks for even just jumping in with a hand wave or whatever it is. Uh, it means a lot to me personally to be able to know that you're there. Honestly, when I'm in an empty room and I'm just looking at a at a camera, uh, you know, it, it's lonely in here. And so I appreciate it. 
Thank you guys for being out there. If I haven't already said so this morning, my name is Jeremy. I'm excited to share with you this morning as we move on in our series that we've been doing together called Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. And this is a fun series, and it's based on a book by the same name by Pastor Andy Stanley. And, uh, and it is a phenomenal book in terms of just trying to get yourself straight, trying to get some decisions, you know, some, a filter in place for making good decisions and a great way, frankly, to start the year together. So I hope you'll pick that up or, or at least that you're tracking with us on Sunday mornings. Um, so at my house, we do a lot of kind of our, our screen stuff happens through our PlayStation. Um, and whenever the PlayStation goes off, there is this channel that is always on on our TV. And it, it well, always on, whenever the TV is on. And it's sort of playing there in the background. And, uh, and we get sucked into it. And it's this sort of funny video show. And, and it seems like the channel just 24-7 is running these videos, like the old America's Funniest Home Video type stuff. Only nowadays there's so much content because everyone's filming everything that happens in their lives. There's always these moments. And so... As that's on, of course, I start watching that on a regular basis. And I don't know if, about you, but like you're watching this, you know it's a funny video show. So you know something crazy is going to happen, right? And it always starts with somebody doing something that you're like, this is just not smart, right? Like you should not do this. Like I know how this video is going to end. Like, I mean, just this week, I remember seeing a guy get on a treadmill on a bike, you know, like as put his bike on a treadmill, tried to go. Of course, it didn't work out. The, the bike went backwards. His face went forward. You can imagine how that works out, right? Or, or this other one where I have saw people with like those, those um, exercise balls that people like to bounce on and stuff. Big one, right? Take it and just go running. And, and, and two people running with them hit each other. And of course, they go flying in opposite directions after the impact. It's like when you see that unfolding, you and I are watching that and going, in, in what world is this a good idea? Like, why would anyone try this? We know how this story ends, don't we? And yet people do. And, and this is part of why a series like this is important because I think in retrospect, many of our decisions, we, we have this similar reaction. What was I thinking, right? If there had been a video on the outside, we all would have known better. And yet we do some of these things anyway. And I think it comes to this, this point where we have to realize in some way that all of us sort of walk a line, don't we? We, we tend to try and walk that line between like what is like reasonable and what is unreasonable, right? Between what is maybe moral or unmoral. We're sort of like, how, where's that line? Or maybe between legal and illegal. Like there are, there's a line that we tend to try and walk to figure out, you know, am I, am I okay? Am I not okay? And, and the truth is this morning that as it comes to, we, we, each week we've been asking a different question together. And today I, I want to ask, instead of like, where's the line, you know, that kind of like moral, immoral, ethical, unethical, uh, I'm in control, I'm out of control. Like, instead of trying to ask where that line is, I, I think there's a better question. It's a mature question that you and I have to ask. And, and it's simply this, what is the wise thing to do, right? Not what's the right thing or what's the wrong thing or what's the moral or immoral or legal or illegal, just like what's the wise thing to do, right? Because here's the truth, and you and I know this, something can be legal, but still be unwise. Something could be moral even, or, or at least morally neutral, and yet still unwise. So something can be not wrong, but also not wise for you and I to do. And so I want to talk about that this morning, because I think if we can, in the moment, ask ourselves, what's the wise thing to do here? I think we save ourselves a ton of regret on the back end, if we can really pause long enough to ask this question. And I, I asked this question this morning because of a passage of scripture that is so good and so powerful. It comes from a man named Paul who wrote a big chunk of the New Testament, lots of letters that he wrote off to churches that he had started throughout the, the known world. And uh, Paul wrote a particular letter to a church in the city called Ephesus. The, the book or the letter in our Bible is called Ephesians. 
And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15, this is what Paul says to this young church, this group of brand new believers. He's trying to guide them. He's trying to help them. He's trying to help them navigate some of the decisions that they're faced with. And this is what he says to them. He says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Now, we're going to leave that on the screen for just a couple of minutes, ask you to bring that back up, because I just want to unpack a couple of things on there real quick. And I want to make sure that you can see it as I'm doing this, because there's some powerful stuff in here. Stuff in here. Look at the first phrase. Be careful how you live right? In other words, don't be careless, be careful. I'm sure you've heard this phrase, that the YOLO phrase, right? You only live once. And, and that's sort of like people's justification for doing insane things, right? But the truth is, if, if it's, I mean, it's a reality. YOLO is correct. You only live once. That's all the more reason to be careful, right? Not to be careless, not to be crazy, but, but to be careful, now, if, if you and I were out at, sitting at the pool, imagine warmer weather, warmer days, and we're sitting by the pool, and a toddler comes walking by, right? And, and they're between us and the pool, and they're walking along. Um, you and I get a little nervous, don't we? When we see this little guy, and, he, and he's just doing his toddle thing, and he's doing this close to the edge of the pool, you and I get nervous. Why do we get nervous? We don't get nervous because... He's drowning. We, we don't get nervous because, I mean, he's not even wet, right? But we get nervous because we know that one small step, one little thing could happen, and suddenly we're in for some trouble. There, there could be tragedy, right? So it's not that the child is currently in danger doing something. It's that we know one step in the wrong direction, and there could be trouble. Isn't this the case in our lives. I mean, often if someone has told you, hey, be careful, it's not necessarily because you are currently doing something. It's because they might be looking at you and going, you know what? That path you're on, you're one step away from falling into the deep end and being in trouble. You are in a, you're in a, you know, you need to be cautious. You're in a precarious situation right now. And so it's important that we think about that. Paul says, be very Careful, right? Careful means use caution. It means don't take unnecessary risks. It means be aware, right? It says don't dangle your toes off the edge of, of immoral or unethical or illegal or unsafe or unhealthy. It's like, no, be careful, right? Like, like be wise about this. Don't do something. Don't put yourself in a position where, where you might be in danger. Uh, my daughter started driving within the last year-ish, and, uh, and when she leaves the house, I don't say, hey, go as fast as you can without getting caught. You know, I, no, I say, be careful out there, right? And I want her to be cautious, not because I don't trust her, but because there's a bunch of other crazies on the road, right? I want her to be careful. I want her to be cautious. I want her to be looking very carefully at what's going on around her. And this is what Paul says. He says, be careful how you live. And then his next phrase is this. He says, not as unwise, but as wise, right? That's sort of the standard, the yardstick by which we should measure our decisions. He says, is this a wise thing or is it unwise, right? Don't, don't do what, what is unwise, but do what is wise. And he says, making the most of every opportunity. Making the most of every opportunity. In other words, you know that this moment right here, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, one day this moment will be a story we tell. So what am I going to do in this moment that makes that story worth telling, right? How do I make the best decision in this moment to make sure that, my, that tomorrow I can tell it and tell it well? If you had the opportunity to go back to that, that night, if you could go back to that one weekend, if you could go back to that that for that time right before you hit send on the email or, or before you went into that meeting or whatever it is, man, how many of us would want to redeem that time, would want to reclaim it and, and do something different 
in that moment. Paul says, make the most of every opportunity. Don't let one of them slip by without really considering how this moment could impact your future. He says, because the days are evil. What does he mean by that? I think what he means is simply that our world and our day-to-day as we go through our lives, there are opportunities for you and I to get distracted, to get detoured, to get offline and off course all over the place. And so he says, make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The days are full of distractions. There are plenty of things that want to take that moment from you, that want to get you off course and get you offline. And Paul says, be, be careful. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil, right? And then he says, therefore, do not be foolish. Do not be foolish. In other words, like if, if, you're, if you have your Bible open this morning or your app or whatever and you're following along, and again, we're in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. If you see that phrase, you know, therefore do not be foolish. Just go ahead and circle that, highlight it, put some exclamation points there, whatever you need to do. Like this is just Paul just sort of trying to say at the top of his voice, guys, come on, like let's do well here. Let's not be foolish. Let's not make a decision in this moment that we're going to regret later. And then he finally, he says, but understand what the Lord's will is. And and listen, I think the point here is not so much gain an understanding. I, I think it's more act on what you know. Like you and I often know what we should do. We know the wise thing to do. And yet often we choose the opposite of that. We choose something different. We might go, well, I know it's wise for me to do this, but man, this over here, this sure tastes good, or this sure looks good, or this sure would, you know, I, I want to buy that thing, or I want to do that thing, or I'm going to make that decision. And, and the truth is, is we know, we know going into it, this isn't necessarily the wise choice for me. And so he says, understand what the Lord's will is. In other words, quit playing games with this, right? Quit rationalizing, quit trying to walk that line between moral or immoral or legal or illegal. He says, no, 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 forget all that. Do the wise thing, right? Make a wise choice about this moment. Um, one, of the, one of the most important ways to do this, and, and one of the things that I found most helpful from this particular chapter in the book that, that I read to, to prepare for this, um, is this idea of reference points. And uh, Pastor Andy Stanley talks about reference points being sort of these these ways to kind of make sure that we're not getting too far offline, that that we have something to look at that kind of keeps us in check, right? And I was thinking about it, it sort of reminded me um, when I was younger, uh, we lived in California, and um, we would go to the beach a lot, but particularly once a year, we would do a camping trip at the beach. And it was a week long. We would camp at the beach. It was beautiful. It was amazing. And, and a lot of these places you could, you camp in your tent in this campground, but you would just walk straight out onto the beach. Uh, and it was, it was amazing. I loved it. One of the, one of the greatest joys of my childhood. I loved it so much. And, but, but what would happen, and especially I think in California, I haven't noticed this as much here in North Carolina, but in California, the, the tides and everything are so powerful and so strong that you can go out swimming, you can go out to ride your boogie board or go do whatever it is that you want to do. And in a matter of just a, a few minutes, you could be 100 feet down, you know, down the beach or 100 yards down the beach. And, um, and so I would go out a lot of times with my cousins. This was like a family thing. We'd go camping and, uh, and we would be out there playing. And here's the thing. When you're in the water with people um, and you're swimming together, guess what? they're moving along at the same pace as you are, right? And so if you're drifting, you you don't know that by looking at the people you're with because you're all drifting along at the same rate. And so one of the things my mom used to tell me is she would, before we went out to the water, she would like put the giant umbrella in the sand and it was some bright color or some whatever, you know, some floral thing. I don't even remember exactly, but, but she would point at it and she would be like, hey, look at, the, look at the umbrella, right? Look at the umbrella. 
And when you're out there in the water, just ever so often, just look up and, and see where the umbrella is. And her point was that when I start drifting down, I, you know, there, there came a point a lot of times I'd been in the water an hour and I'm having so much fun, I completely forget about anything else. And finally, I'm hungry, right? It's like lunchtime. And I come walking down the water and I would, like nobody is recognizable. I'm in a completely different place, right? And I'm like, what is happening? And I would look up the beach and like way, way up there, I could see a tiny little thing. Well, that's the umbrella, right? That, that was the reference point. And so I could get out and I could walk back up the beach and know where I was supposed to be. And so these reference points for you and me are these opportunities for you and I to, to sort of check our decisions based upon these reference points. Is this a wise decision or not? And so I'm going to share a few of these with you this morning. I got three reference points for us to consider when it comes to Paul's admonition to be wise, right? To live wisely. And so this first one is, this first reference point is your past experience, right? Your past experience. In other words, if you were going to rephrase the question, right, what's the wise thing to do? If I was going to rephrase that question according to this reference point, I would simply say, in light of, like, I'm going to personalize this now, in light of my past experience, what's the wise thing for me to do in this moment, right? In light of where I've been, in light of the, the, the opportunities I've had in the past, in light of the the mistakes I've made in the past, in light of the things that I've done or where I've come from, what's the wise thing for me to do in this moment, right? And this is so important for you and I to personalize this because what's wise for me to do in this moment may not be wise for you to do in that moment, right? So for example, maybe, maybe what someone else considers a pastime is for you a pathway to something that is really unhealthy for you, something that will get you way off course, right? And so while it may be perfectly acceptable and okay for someone else to do, it may not be the wisest thing for you to do or for me to do, right? So in light of my past experience, what's the thing for me, what's the wise thing for me to do? When it comes to relationships, think about it. In light of my past history with my relationships, is it wise for me to jump right into this one in this moment? I just came out of this other one. Is this a wise decision for me to jump into this in light of where I've been? Or, or maybe eating that thing, given your specific diagnosis, well, you can go in light of where I've been, in light of my past, in light of what a doctor told me, in light of whatever, is this the wise decision for me right now, right? Right? Let me give you a personal example for me. Um, I have found living in North Carolina, and again, I came from California where, where you know, it, it was sunny most of the time and, and awesome in terms of the weather. But I came here, and uh, we have days like we're having today, and we have something called winter here in North Carolina, which I know some of you are watching from other parts of the country you know that we don't really understand winter, even in North Carolina, because you're buried under some six feet of snow or something. But I get it. But here's the thing. For me, North Carolina might as well be Siberia. It is a frozen tundra outside compared to what I was used to growing up. And, and so what happens as winter is approaching, uh, about November-ish, I start feeling down. I start going, man, cold is coming. Cold is coming. And, and then through December, January, stretching into February and March, and if you ask Jillian, she says till like August, that, that it gets, it's cold here, right? And, and we have cold days, and I get the winter blues. Like that is a real thing. And I feel down in this time of year. Now, that is something I didn't understand when I first got here, but after a few years, I started realizing it, and now I anticipate it, and not just in a, like, anticipate, oh, no, here it comes kind of way. I have to sort of proactively make different decisions, and so I, I decide in light of my past, in light of what I know about myself in this time of year, uh, I make sure I have some counseling appointments on the calendar. I make sure that I'm staying active, that I know while I'm, I'm stuck inside a lot, especially with a, a coronavirus, I, I run on the treadmill a lot to, to get my you know, energy going, to get my life going, my blood flowing. 
Um, I try in a, again, a non-COVID season to think about traveling to some warm places a couple of times during the winter. And so in light of my past experience, what's the wise thing for me to do in this season? Well, I have to, in order to be wise, I have to take care of myself in this particular season. Maybe that is the case for you. Or maybe, maybe you say, you know what, in light of the family I grew up in, in light of the dysfunction that I came out of, that, that I have to make different kinds of decisions than maybe other people make as I move forward. Or, or I have to understand, man, there's a lot in my story that I've got to unpack so that I can live in, in a healthy relationship going forward. Uh, you know, you can imagine as a pastor, I talk to a lot of people about marriage. And, and sometimes it amazes me that when I start asking people about where they came from, what their family was like, that that's somehow a disconnected for people. They're like, oh, but that's just where I came from. I'm going to do something different. And it's like, well, I hope you will. But where you came from comes with you into that relationship. And particularly for people who are being remarried uh, a second time or a third time, man, those things come with you. If we don't recognize them and learn about them, then, then we're bound to carry that stuff into the future with us. So in light of your past, in light of where you've been, uh, what's the wise thing for you to do? How do you need to act today in light of where you have been? Another reference point, the second one this morning, is your current circumstances. Your current circumstances. So again, reframing our question, in light of my current circumstance or my current frame of mind, or my current financial situation, or my current relationship status, right? Whatever it is, in light of my current circumstance, what is the wise thing for me to do, right? Considering where I'm currently at, what kind of decision should I make? And this is so important because we tend to let whatever the pressure is in this moment dictate sometimes our decisions and while that might fix today or it might fix this moment, it sets us up for a whole bunch of trouble in the future, right? And so we have to really think about in light of where I'm at, what's the wise thing for me to do? Should I make a giant financial commitment in this moment? Should I make a big relationship decision in this moment? Should I you know, decide that or decide that? Should I move? Should I take that job? Should I not? What, given my current situation, what's the best decision for me? Now, here's the deal. We are all living in a case study of this right now, aren't we, with coronavirus? In light of our current situation, right, many of us are going, man, I, I had an opportunity. Should I take the opportunity? Should I not take the opportunity? For some of us, given our current circumstance, that's a great opportunity, and yeah, we should take it. For others of us, given our current circumstance, knowing this won't last forever, and maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should just hit pause on that itch we've got to do that other thing or to, to go there or to do that. And we should just realize, hey, life is seasonal and it won't always be this way. So I need to be careful in this moment that I don't make a decision that I'll regret tomorrow based on how I woke up this morning, right? Based on how I feel today. And this is why it's so important to pay attention to what you're feeling, to pay attention. Am I, am I angry right now? Am I hungry right now, right? Am I hangry right now, right? When you're a combination of the two. Am I in a position where I'm grieving right now? Am I in a good financial position right now to make this commitment or make this decision? Paying attention to where we're at in the moment will really help us when we make decisions that will impact us down the line. If, if you're in a state like me, a lot of times if I'm hungry or, or whatever, like I, I have to be careful that when someone talks to me that I don't just respond because sometimes I'll respond out of that, you know, like the Snickers commercial, like where someone needs, you need a Snickers because you're kind of testy right now, right? And that, that I have to be really careful about that. And so in light of my current frame of mind, in light of where I'm at in this moment, the wise thing might be just to zip it, right? To not respond in this particular moment. So in light of your current circumstance, what's the wise thing for you 
to do. You can probably all predict what our third reference point is, and that is simply this, your future hopes and dreams. In other words, in light of your future hopes and dreams, whatever those might be, what's the wise thing for you to do right now, right? In light of where you want to be in five years, in 10 years, next week, whatever that looks like, what's the wise thing for you to do right now? I want you to, for just a minute, take a, a kind of think about what is the mental picture of your, prefer, your preferred future? When you think about that professionally, think about that relationally, think about that financially, where do you want to be, right, in the future? What's the thing that, that you want to accomplish or, or the place you want to be? For me, you know, I, I mean, I have professional, I suppose, aspirations and things like that, but... But for me, the thing that I think about a lot, actually, is growing old with Kimmy and, and being in a position where my kids love me and want to be with me and, and want to be with each other. I, I want this family thing. I want that like holiday movie, right, where the multiple generations are hanging out and we actually love each other and, and things are awesome. Like that's my preferred future. That's the thing that I really hope. And, and I suppose on the professional level, um, I, I am constantly watching, and you may not be aware of this because maybe it's not your world, but I see pastors and people in ministry who don't finish well, who kind of yeah, like are amazing. They do amazing things for many, many years, but, but somewhere along the line, they started making decisions about cutting corners and doing things. And eventually some sort of scandal or something comes out. And these people, a lot of them were heroes of mine who don't finish well. And I, I am just convinced that, that man, there, there's got to be a way to finish well, right? Like we've got to be able to get to, this, to the end without being embarrassed or ashamed of the, the path that we took. And I hope, for me, that's my preferred future. I want to finish well in ministry. I want to finish well in what God has put before me. And so I have to think about what am I going to do in this moment that's going to move me a step closer to that preferred future, right? For my, for my marriage, if I want to grow old and, and have this amazing, like if you ever saw the old couple that's still holding hands and they're walking around Walmart and you're like, what? How is that so awesome? Well, that didn't just happen, right? That is a series of day-by-day of -day decisions. And, and so I have to think about that. Am I going to allow this stupid thing about the dishes to get in the way of the preferred future that I have? Or am I going to just humble myself and get over that or forgive that or, or do the thing or whatever it is, right? That, that in this moment, I've got to make decisions with tomorrow in mind. I have to go in light of where I want to be, in light of the kind of relationships I want with my kids, in light of that, it, it, should I work more? Should I travel more? Should I do these things more? Or should I, you know, should I not? Should I make a different kind of decision? And so, uh, you know, thinking about the future, thinking about where you want to be, Paul says, do what's wise, not unwise, right? Make the most of every opportunity. Understand there's things that are out that are going to try and combat you and come against you and try and change where you're headed. But, but man, will you do the wise thing? So let me ask you this morning, in light of the marriage that you want, What's the wise thing for you to do? And I ask that even to those of you who are single out there watching right now. In light of the marriage that you one day want, what's the wise thing for you to do today? What's the wise thing for you to do in the relationship that you're in? Is that relationship going to lead to that marriage? If not, then come on, what's the wise thing to do? If it could, then protect it. Continue to do what's wise in that relationship because whether that's your future spouse or someone else's, make sure you do the wise thing together. How about your financial future? If you're going, man, one day I want to have that or I want to be able to do that or I want to be able to go on that trip with my family, well, what's the wise thing to do right now? Should you max out the credit card? Should you rack up the debt on that? Should you do this or should you sit back? Should you wait? Should you be patient? Should you do today? what you can do so that tomorrow you can do what you want to do, right? Or in light of the promotion or the position that you hope to achieve, what's the wise thing for you to do in your current job, 
in your current day to day? I know it's the drag. I know it's not where you want to be ultimately, but, but is there something you could do tomorrow on Monday morning that will get you to the preferred future that you have in mind? And so all of that, if I could just sum that up this morning, we come to a decision, a decision that we make together. And this is the maturity decision. The decision is this. I will do the wise thing. I will take the past, the present, and the future into consideration. I'm going to say it one more time, and I'm going to challenge you wherever you're at to say this with me. I will do the wise thing. I will take the past, present, and future into consideration. I hope that's the case for you and for me. I know how easy it is to justify wherever we're at and whatever decisions we're making by saying things like, you know, there's nothing illegal about this, or you know what, it's it, like people do this all the time, or, you know, I'm not really hurting anyone, or I can handle this, or there's no law against this, or you know what, God will forgive me. And all of those things may be 100% true. But again, is it the wise thing to do? In light of my past, in light of where I'm at right now, in light of where I want to be, is it the wise thing to do? And when you and I can choose to do today what will get us to where we want to be tomorrow, then you know that we're living with wisdom. Let me pray for you. God, thank you so much that, uh, that your word can just speak to where we're at, can illuminate our pathway. God, thank you for the experience that we've had in our life. God, some of it painful, some of it difficult, some of it mistakes. But God, all of it sheds light on where we're at in this moment. And so God, we're thankful for that. God, in this moment, thank you that, that we can tune in to what's happening around us and, and make decisions that will lead us forward, God, to that preferred future that we have. And I pray you will give us wisdom, God. You're, you're, the scriptures say that it's the one thing that we can guarantee if we ask for wisdom that you'll give it to us. And so God, we pray for wisdom. We ask you for wisdom. We want to do the wise thing. So God, show us that, uh, share that with us, help us as we navigate these day-to-day -day decisions. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you today. And if you haven't caught the rest of the series, all of it's available on YouTube or on our website. We encourage you to go there and check it out. Before you head out today, let me tell you about a couple of more things. Uh, just remind you of a couple of things as well. If you're new, please go fill out that Connect form on our website. We'd love to get to know you and to be able to invite you next Sunday to our Zoom uh, meetup right after the service that we call Chapter 1. And then if you're giving today, we want to encourage you, you can go online and give at storychurch.org slash give. For all of you who are regular givers, know that your giving statements should have reached you in an email. If you did not get that, please do let us know. We want to make sure that you have everything you need as tax season is coming up and, uh, and you've got that in your hands. That is all I've got, but we do have Story Kids coming up next. If you've got little ones, bring them in. And uh, the littlest ones will go first, followed by the elementary kids next. Guys, we can't wait to see you again next week. Thanks for being here. Until then, have a great week. Bye.
at the park that I decided to make a sandbox right here in the clubhouse. And I'm so happy you're here to see it. I better start working so I can start playing. Phew, that was a lot of work. But look, I finished the sandbox. Wow, I love, love, love it. I can't wait to start playing. Who, who? It's Zoe. Hi there, Zoe. Who, who? Playing with sand, are you? Hi, Ollie. Yep, I sure am. I just love, love, love my new sandbox. Loving the sandbox is a great thing to do. But I have a story about real love for you. Just listen to this. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? I've got a Bible story for me and you. <laughs> Stormy Jane. Oh, hi, friends. Stormy, look, it's our friends. You'll have to forgive her. She got a new toy. And as you can tell, it's very... Squeaky, she loves it. Don't you love it, Stormy? <laughs> so today's story is about some very important people who came to see Jesus. And Jesus loved those people even more than Stormy loves her squeaky toy. So the true story from the Bible begins with Jesus about to teach a crowd of people. Wow, that's a lot of people. It seems like everyone wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. Now see if you can spot the very important people who came to see Jesus. There were lots of adults, moms and dads and aunts and uncles. There were teachers and doctors and carpenters and fishermen and Stormy Jane. Wait, Stormy Jane, you weren't in the story. Get out of there, silly dog. <gasps> Look, I see the very important people. There they are. It's children. They wanted to go see Jesus too. But Jesus' disciples stopped them. No, 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 they said. The disciples told the children to stop and go away. But Jesus called the children to him and said, let the little children come to me. So they did. Jesus opened his arms wide and the children came. 
Jesus told the crowd to never stop children from coming to see him because children are very important to him. Did you hear that, friends? You are important to Jesus. He loves you and wants to be your friend forever. Oh, hey there, Ollie. Ollie, tell me, who loves you? Jesus loves me. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who loves you? Jesus loves me. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Bye. So there's your story. It's all true. Jesus loved the children, and he loves you too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, that was such a great story. Jesus showed that he loves children so much. Jesus loves me and you too. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you didn't, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good. You know what? I love this sandbox. But Jesus loves us even more. Wow, that's a lot of love. You know what? I should let my friends know that there's a special surprise for them at the clubhouse. I'll see you next time. Bye! A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loves at all times. Proverbs 17, 17. A snack bar? A good word of the month at school? A great catchphrase for a t-shirt? Kindness can be all those things, but it can't stop there. Kindness isn't something you wear on the outside. It's what comes from the inside. Kindness chooses to slow down and see the value in someone else, even if you are upset, tired, or in a hurry. Kindness chooses to treat everyone like they're made in the image of God, even if they're different, overlooked, or unloving. See, when you choose kindness, you choose your words wisely. I can't believe you did that! Ah! I'm sorry you had a rough day. How can I help? When you choose kindness, you offer it to everyone, from your family and friends to that grouchy old neighbor and that kid at school you can't stand. When you choose kindness, others see the love of God shining through you. That's why kindness is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Woo! Got a rhythm in my heart and in my soul. Got a 
Got a reason for this joy I can't control. I want to sing, I want to dance, and give everyone a chance to hear about this in this life I know. Pardon my exuberance. I tend to get a teensy, weensy bit excited whenever I talk about game day! Game day! Game day! Go, 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 go! You see, being a fan is important to me because it's the perfect way to show your favorite team kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Being a super fan is how I show my team what they mean to me. They bring me so much excitement and joy every time they win. I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm gonna burst. And even when they don't win, they're still so much fun to watch. That's why I cheer so loud. It's why I put on face paint and make a fool out of myself. <laughs> Kindness is bigger than just being a fan of a sports team. We should be kind to everyone. We should be fans of the people we see every day. Woohoo! Go everyday people! Way to be normal! Woo! But everyday people eh, don't always fill me with excitement and joy. They're not always fun to watch. So why should I be a fan of everyday people? Is there even a point to kindness? Of course there is! And you'll find out what it is in today's story. Too much! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. See you soon. 
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32. Sally Jessup and May Lynn lived in the same town and went to the same school. And both girls had YouTube shows about slime that racked up views from across the world. Get slimed with May! Sally's Slime Creations. The two girls were polite to each other in the hall at school. Hey there. Hi. But they weren't exactly friends either. I'm doing glow in the dark slime next week, so you should do something different. <laughs> Look, I give my viewers what they want. Which is basically the same thing over and over. Rainbow sand slime, rainbow unicorn slime, rainbow crunchy slime. You're just jealous how many views my rainbow glitter slime got. Whatever. Plus, you use borax in your slime. It's not safe. Is too. Liquid starch is way better. The two girls glared at each other and marched off. A few days later, May watched Sally's newest episode. Sally's Slime Creations. She really should get better theme music. Here's a super important PSA before we get started. You've probably seen some slime recipes that use borax, but borax isn't safe or healthy. Hey, that is not true. I know there's another YouTube show telling you to use borax for the best slime, but in my opinion, you should just unsubscribe to that channel. What? And now it's time for some rainbow fluffy slime. You have got to be kidding. Sally just told thousands of people to stop watching my show. Well, I am unsubbing her right now. May couldn't stop thinking about what Sally had done. I cannot believe her. In the cafeteria at school the next day, Sally walked over to where May was sitting with some other friends at the lunch table. Can I sit here? No way, she can't sit here. When Sally spilled her backpack at the lockers. Oh no. May pretended not to notice and marched right on past. That evening, when May recorded her next episode, she had an announcement of her own. Today on Get Slime with May, I've got an amazing guest to tell us all about the science of slime. But first, I need to warn you about another slime channel. Someone's telling you not to use borax. Well, you should hit unsubscribe fast cause she's a liar. Borax is completely safe and makes the best slime. Now it's time to welcome our guest, Wendy Newton. She's a chemistry expert. May switched to a split screen with her guest, a middle-aged woman with wild curly hair and sleepy eyes. Hi, Wendy. Welcome to the show. I'm honored to be here. I gotta ask, you think borax is the best thing to use for slime, right? Borax is great if it's used correctly. I think God has given each of us the smarts to look up safety guidelines and be wise about it. Oh, yeah, of course. So let's get down to it. You're a chemist. How cool is that? You could say we're all chemists. I mean, just baking brownies is chemistry. That's right. What kind of chemistry are you whipping up for your dinner? Oh, well, it's actually uh, uh, uh 3 a.m. here. Wait, what? I'm in Dubai right now. But that's like halfway around the world, so it's night. I. Oh, I am so sorry. I woke you up. It's all right. You said that in your email. I forgot. It's okay, really. You're being so nice about it. Hey, kind is cool. There's this verse in the Bible from the book of Ephesians. It's kind of my motto. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. May frowned. She had to admit she wasn't always great at being kind when someone made her angry. Look, I've messed up so many times and God has wiped the slate clean every single time. That makes it a lot easier to forgive when other people make mistakes. Like calling in the middle of the night? Hey, 
Aren't we a little off topic from slime? Um, I think I'm gonna have to restart this recording. I said some stuff about someone else I need to delete. And how about I call you back in the morning? I mean, my morning, your afternoon. Hmm, hmm, that sounds fantastic. May leaned back in her chair and released a long breath. I haven't been very kind at all, even a little. Grabbing her phone, May started a DM to Sally. Hey, I'm sorry about the lunch table thing. I think Rainbow Slime is pretty cool. Maybe we should do a show together sometime. May wasn't sure how Sally would respond, but she did feel better knowing that she'd taken the steps toward being kind, instead of focusing on payback. So what's the point of kindness? Why should we be fans of other people? The answer is here. <laughs> Ephesians 4.32, the Apostle Paul wrote, be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. God sent Jesus to die for our sins, not because we deserved it, but because that's how much God loves us. <laughs> Talk about kindness. And we can show God how much we love him by being kind to others. That means forgiving people even when they let you down. I forgive you for spilling grape juice all over my favorite shirt. I still love you. It means helping someone even when you're not told to. Whoa, whoa, whoa don't move that refrigerator all by yourself. <laughs> Let me help you out. <laughs> or I'll try to. Woo! And sometimes kindness means just being a fan. Thank you for packing my lunch for school. You make the best of lunches. The one thing to remember today is this. Be kind to others because God is kind to you. Be fans of other people. Then every day can feel like 